Hi, we're at the Victoria Gourmet Test Kitchen. I'm Victoria, and this is Carrie. Thanksgiving is coming up, and we are going to get ready for it starting right now. We're going to go over a whole bunch of stuff. If you're preparing a whole turkey, we got you covered. If your pod's smaller this year and you're preparing just a turkey breast, we got you covered. We're going to make gravy, we're going to make turkey stock, we're going to stuff this bird the way I like to do it, which has no bread involved. And we're going to show you step by step everything you need to know about getting ready for Thanksgiving. We're going to answer every question you may have or may not have or will soon have <laughs> um, about turkey, Thanksgiving, about everything. So stay with us. All right. First, let's talk about turkey stock. You're going to need turkey stock to make gravy and you're going to need turkey stock to drizzle on your bread based stuffing. So let's get going on the turkey stock. We have a saucepan here with um, what, what comes inside the turkey, which is the neck and the heart and the gizzards. The gizzards. So don't if, forget to take this out. Don't cook these in the bag. It's happened the before. Turkey. It's not the worst case scenario, but it's not the best either. <laughs> so if you are cooking a full turkey, you will have these three things in your turkey. Again, the heart, the gizzards, and the neck and you are going to put that in a saucepan, cover it with water, and some turkey rub seasoning, and we're going to talk you through this. We will also talk you through, if you do not have, if you're cooking a turkey breast, we're going to make gravy with you, but stay tuned, we're going to do the full turkey first, it takes the longest. All right, I'm going to put four cups of water in here, so we have plenty of stock when we're done, and I'm going to add... How much do you want? Let's measure that out. Um, I'm going to do... Uh, two tablespoons. Two of tablespoons of turkey rub in here. One, two. Yeah, right. Where's the okay. And then we're going to put this on the stove top and let it simmer for probably an hour. We're probably going to end up with what, like three cups? Yeah, about three cups. Okay. At this point, you can chill that to room temperature and then refrigerate it once you strain it. I would strain it through a fine mesh fine mesh um, strainer so that if any um, particles are in there you, you, um, you flush that out and um, you have a clear stock. Um, that's something that you could do if you don't have a strainer, a cheesecloth or I mean a paper towel would work, but you really want to kind of flush all that out. Um, so Victoria is stirring that up, we're going to heat that up, bring it to a boil again and we'll simmer for about um, an hour. About an hour, alright so that's the turkey stock. All right, so next we'll stuff this bird fix. So we're, today we're going to be using our Victoria's fennel and orange stuffing. Fennel and orange stuffing. All of my turkey recipes use a variety of fruits and vegetables to stuff the bird with. I don't include any bread in any of my stuffings because think about it. If you put bread in there, you're going to absorb all of the juices that you're so desperately wanting to drop to the bottom of the pan to be included in your really delicious gravy. So why make your stuffing soggy and your turkey dry when you can make your turkey juicy and your stuffing get some nice crispies on the end? That's the best part. All right, we're gonna start off with, we're gonna take this and we're gonna use just these pieces here on the ends and we're gonna save that for crudite. So this goes in here. Just those leafy greens. Yep, and then for the fennel, also sold under anise. If you see it at a grocery store, yep. sometimes it has under anise, it has a licorice flavor. We're going to take some of these greens. Oh, it smells so good. And we're going to take some of the bulb. So just to be clear, Victoria, these, this stuffing you're not going to eat. Correct. Nope. Once it goes in the turkey, it never comes out. So this is just an aromatic way to add more flavor. And more liquid. And more liquid. So all of this uh, fruits and vegetables and all of the turkey stuffing recipes that I have contribute more juices throughout the roasting process so that when you're done, you have more juice at the bottom of the pan that's flavored with these fruits and vegetables. So it's just delicious. So, and why are you cutting your uh, lemon in small pieces versus maybe a half? Just because I want to be able to stuff it without having something get sort of blocking. Oh, that's a good idea. And I see you're keeping the rind on. You're not going to squeeze the lemons. You're going to let them be whole. Let them, yep, let them just 
naturally juice during the roasting process. So, funny story, when Victoria hired me, she asked me what my dream job was. <laughs> Remember what I said? No. I said I wanted to work on the turkey hotline at uh, Butterball. <laughs> it's still true. I would love to give, I would love to dedicate a day to helping people because Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday and to think that someone didn't enjoy it would break my heart. Um, well, I actually have a friend who works on the Turk, uh, Butterball Turkey Hotline, and, and given that this is 2020, she's going to have a heck of a, of a year dealing with that. Oh. Can you imagine the calls I get? Oh my god. Well, of course, one of the co common calls I get is people who are cooking turkeys for the first time don't realize they have to take that paper bag out. Or it's frozen. <laughs> All right, so here we have, days. I'm going to add some olive oil and some turkey rub. Okay, what about carrots, Victoria? Are there carrots in that? They're going in. Okay. Oh my gosh, the, the orange and the fennel smell so yummy and fresh. You know what? It smells so clean. It does. It's got such a nice citrusy vibe. And these particular vegetables will give off a lot of juice over the course of the roasting. So, so the carrots are not peeled. Not peeled. Okay. And it looked like they're similar size to the lemons and the oranges. Yep. Cut. Pea size is pretty much the same. We're going to put a couple tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. And then I'm going to put a couple tablespoons of turkey. So if you were comfortable working with, with having fennel or can't find it, is there a substitute you could get? Um, you certainly could use um, cut up onions or you could use um, leeks. Um, I mean, you, if you can't find it, you just skip it. I mean, I would think an onion, which is universal, would be a great substitute. Yeah. If you can't find the fennel, um, an onion or a leek would, would right. be a good substitute. So right. look, look at how look at how beautiful this is. That is gorgeous. Is. This is our stuffing. So we're going to put this in both both ends, the neck and the cavity. Beautiful bird. I know it's going to the be colors of the autumnal colors of the orange, yep, and the green and the kind of a brownish color. Yeah, so pretty. so pretty. So this is this is going to stay here. Are we going to trust this, or are we just going to leave it? We're going to trust it. Okay. And then I'm going to put some more in this end. Right. Yeah. This and then we'll just use something like a a metal pin to close that. Okay. Kind of keep it all in. Yeah. Keep it tight. So, all right. So that's the stuffing. That's we'll perfect. just trust this and pin that, and then we're good to go. And do we need to add any water to the pan, Victoria? Um, I would say yes. I, I like to put a little water in the pan. Um, I also like to put a stick of butter on top of the bird when I put it in. Okay. More butter, more better. More butter, more better. All right. We're gonna we're gonna get some turkey twine, and we'll see you back in a minute to truss this up. All right. All right, now I'm going to truss this. I have the the rack here holds the wings in a pretty good position, so I'm not going to worry about that. But I do like to tie the legs up, so I'm going to just wrap these like this a couple of times, and then over here a couple of times. That's that's that. All right, so he's ready to go in the oven. Add a little more stuff. Perfect. Now we're going to do the final preparation before we put it in the oven. So I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil on top and rub it on the outside so I can get the turkey rub to stick nicely. Then I'm going to put turkey rub, 
rub them all over. That. Oh, I can smell the sage. Sage and garlic. And garlic. Very traditional flavor profile for a turkey. Yeah. Okay, then I'm gonna put about two cups of water in the bottom of the pan. Now, this turkey was not brined, but if it was brined, your cooking time will be a little bit less. We're looking for the temperature to register about 155 in the breast and 165 in the leg when we're done. And then you're going to let it rest for about half an hour while you make the gravy so it will continue to cook. So Victoria, will this little button here pop at 155? It may not because a lot of the standards, like the butterball standards and the traditional cook, uh, turkey standards, make it go higher than it should. So that's one of the reasons that people always end up with the with the dry turkey. The dry turkey. So this is this is Thanksgiving trickery right here. Let's just put that right there trickery. before we put it in the oven. So what is the reason, Victoria? I've never seen this before, and I've had Thanksgiving at your house, um, but I've always come over before after the turkey's done. <laughs> is that you don't stuff under the cheek? Um, I the have. I just don't think that it makes that much difference. I feel like the turkey. Rub stays on nicely whether you put it underneath, whether you put it on top. Right, and the butter's all going the same place anyway. It is. It to is. the gravy. It is. Right? Wow, that's Turkey Trickery 101. <laughs> I learned something. I love it. Remember, um, Thanksgiving, one of the mottos is more butter, more, more better. More butter. So we're going to cook this. Um, it's roughly about 15 minutes a pound. Yep. Okay. And you're going to cook your turkey, no matter how many pounds it is, about 15 minutes. You want to check it with your... Um, your digital read thermometer in the thickest part of the breast, and this is a good guide here, is to put it next to this little button here, mm -hmm. um, or the deepest part of the thigh, 155, 165, let it sit for 30 minutes, because that residual heating will bring it up to mm -hmm. 160 and 170, 75. So this is part of the dark meat thigh, and then down here too is a good place to check. Okay. So, all right, butter on top for me. I sure can. The, the stock that we made, is done. It smells amazing. I, I can't even tell you. I wish you could smell this. We're going to strain it here, but I do want to take a minute to talk about broth versus stock. This is chicken broth and this is turkey stock. And look at the difference in the color. What is the difference between broth and stock? Right? Bones. This one has bones in it. This has the turkey neck bone in it. So this is stock. This is stock. And if you were going to have chicken broth or chicken stock, Victoria, would you expect that the chicken stock would be the same color here as turkey stock? Um, it might be a little bit lighter than the turkey stock, but it's definitely going to be significantly deeper in color than the broth. So if you were making any kind of soups or stews or anything that called for um, some sort of liquid, would you choose the stock or the broth? I'd always go for the stock. When I'm making it myself, it's kind of a hybrid because I'll use like a a chicken carcass from a leftover rotisserie chicken, but then I'll also add some vegetables in there, like mm, some onions okay. and carrots. So it has both components of the flavor notes from the from the um, broth, but then the richness from the stock. I mean, that is just light and day difference. It I is. don't think I don't think anyone really thinks about how dark and beautiful that is. I mean, now I'll always choose the stock. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's, let's see if we can do this. Here we go. So I'm holding back the neck and the heart and the gizzards. But you can see why we're straining this because we really want to keep out um, all of these liquids, a little bit Particles. of fat residuals. Yep. But look how dark and look beautiful at that. that is. Look at the color of that. Now remember, this is gonna, this is gonna help go to make our gravy. So at this point, we can um, let, let this cool, put in the mm -hmm. refrigerator, and then cover it and we can, it can be ready to go. So I could, you could technically make this Two or three days ahead. You're going to brine your turkey. Yep, you could. A couple days ahead, you could do this and have it ready for turkey day for gravy. But this is the key to making your gravy. And also, sometimes if I have enough, I'll use it to base the turkey. Mm -hmm. And I also use about a half a cup of this to drizzle over my bread based stuffing so it has that turkey flavor. Right. Just a little extra touch of something you just yeah. can't put your finger on. It's the best stuffing in the world. So this is the magic right here. Okay. All right, so our turkey's in the oven. Um, it is again cooking 15 minutes a pound. We'll be taking that out shortly. So we're gonna we're gonna.
delve into the gravy as soon as the turkey comes out. Okay. It's been a couple of hours. Let's baste it. All right. Oh, Victoria, look at this. Pull this out. All right. I am going to start by putting one second two turkey here. stock over him because I'm going to get it all back. Put your hand there. Can you move your hand? Look at that. All right, time. before we close it up, I'm going to put mittens on the little wings so that they don't burn. Very important trick. Little trick. Mittens. Be careful. While we're here, I'm just going to take the temperature. So I'm putting in the thickest part of the breast here. Remember, we're looking for a temperature of about 155 because residual heating will take us up to 160. Well, Victoria gives that another little baste. And I'm at right at 137, so I probably have another hour to go, maybe 45 minutes until this is done. Look at how pretty this looks. Here, we'll get golden brown when we pull it out. All right. All right, back in. Let's look at this turkey. What All do you right. think? Oh my gosh. Look at that. Do a quick instant read just to make sure we're at the right temperature. Let's see. Right, 155. Oh, 165. We're all set with that. We'll take this out. Look at this. Look at this beautifully. And it did pop. It did pop. Look how beautiful that looks. Absolutely gorgeous. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this and remove this to a cutting board. Okay. And then we will um, make our gravy right in the pan. All right. It is the moment to make the gravy. We've roasted our turkey. Now we're going to make the gravy. Let's do it. So we're going to go through all of the components that you need to make gravy. The first thing you need to choose is whether you want to use flour or cornstarch to, to make the thickener, to make the roux. I like to use flour, but you certainly could use cornstarch. I use about a quarter of a cup of flour, and then I add about a tablespoon of seasoning, and I've got about four cups of that stock that we made to make the gravy. Here are the drippings from the pan. See how they've separated into the dark pan juices and then the fat on the top? So I'm spooning the fat off till I have about a quarter cup, and that's what I'm going to use to make the roux. Carrie likes to make the roux with, with all of the dark pan juices. I do. I use, I would, so there's no wrong way to make gravy um, as long as you make gravy. That's the key. Right? <laughs> you gotta make the gravy. <laughs> you gotta make the gravy. Um, there's no wrong way. So cornstarch or flour, um, the only rule here is that for both of them is you really cannot add um, flour or cornstarch to something that's already hot. You gotta add it when it's cold and whisk it and then um, to get it emulsified. Otherwise, you're gonna have a, something lumpy and lumpy gravy is a no-no on Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. So the only really rule there to be safe is, again, you probably wanna use, a, um, if you're gonna use a quarter cup of flour, you're probably gonna only use, which is about four tablespoons, you're probably only use about two tablespoons of cornstarch. Um, if you need to add more, you can add a little bit of cornstarch to something cold, whisk it in, and then add it to something that on the pan. Just keep that in mind. Um, that's how those two work. Um, for the drippings, um, I remove all the fat and then I use butter. But there's, again, there's no wrong way to do it. Today we're making the Victoria Gourmet um, proven method and uh, I'm excited to taste this gravy today. All right, so I'm, I've got about three tablespoons of fat here. I'm gonna start with this. So Victoria, if you had more than four tablespoons or three tablespoons, what would you do with that? I would discard it. You discard it, okay. So if you had a larger turkey or you had more fat, um, you would discard that. Also, another way to do this would be to put this in the refrigerator and when it coagulates and you have this kind of a grease cap on the top, if you will, you could just remove it in one piece and toss that away or cut three tablespoons off. Yep, or use butter. Then I, I finish my, my gravy with just a little bit of sherry and I like to use the dry sherry. Oh my gosh, I'm out this water. I All cannot right. wait for this. Let's get started. All right, so here we have the roasting pan and it has the melted fat in it. So I'm gonna to start to add the flour to make the roux. So the fat is nice and hot. 
I'm going to start off with about half of this and see what it looks like. All right, here we go. There we have the roux. And now we're going to start to gradually add the turkey stock that we made. And this is where you have to be a little bit patient, adding a little bit at a time. Starting to get thicker. That's the roux in action. Now we're going to finish it off by adding some of my turkey rub seasoning. dark pan juices and then just a little bit of dry sherry really nice addition to the gravy rounds off the mouthfeel. So this is going to continue to thicken. One of the great tips that Carrie came up with was to heat up your gravy boat so that it's hot when you put the gravy in and it stays hot. And as you have it sit on the table, it will continue to thicken. So there we have it. Nice, dark, not too thick, perfectly seasoned. Gravy is done. Wow, Vicki, you've outdone yourself. Look at this gravy, this turkey looks amazing. Well, you did help me plate it. I did it all, yeah. So here is the orange and fennel roast turkey, and here is the gravy that we just completed, and it's thickening as it sits here, um, just the way I like it, made with my turkey rub, and we're ready to eat. This looks spectacular. Thank you for joining us. We'll show you next. If you would like to have a smaller Thanksgiving or maybe you're having a smaller crowd this year, we're going to do just a, a turkey breast. We'll make gravy from that as well. All right? Awesome.